Welcome to Conversations with the Commission. And today we have with us Kathy Beauregard, the Director of Athletics at Western Michigan University. Kathy, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Longest tenured Director of Athletics in the Mid-American Conference. What have you seen in the changes in the enterprise of intercollegiate athletics since you began in that role? Well, you are correct, longest, and um, actually have served my entire career at Western Michigan, being a coach before I then moved to an associate AD and then moved to the director of athletics. So I have seen what I would call change, and uh, change is definitely always an important part of what we need to be open to, and um, certainly have watched the part of in the Mid-American Conference move from being homed in Toledo to I was even a part of it when we chose to come to this beautiful city and uh, really have the opportunity for our student athletes to play in the NBA arena uh, for our championship games. Uh, similar when we used to do the football championship game at host institutions, have the opportunity to provide a championship NFL arena. So I think one of the things that excites me most is what I've been able to see the growth in what our student athletes have really been able to become uh, when they choose to come to a Mid-American Conference school. You were a gymnastics coach. How did that prepare you for the role you're in today? Well, it certainly uh, definitely shows that you're able to flip-flop your day around because um, one of the things I would say about our jobs today is some days you can get up believing you know exactly what your plans are going to be for the day and due to so many different issues that can happen on your campus, I'm a part of the presidential leadership team, um, obviously the NCA changes, student athlete concerns, um, the NCA, yeah, just so many different things really. Um, I think that it has definitely changed um, to much more of a legal aspect of certainly also having to be involved with uh, legal conversations almost every day and uh, just a, a wide variety of what's really happening with our student athletes today and what we really need to make sure that we're concentrating with them. We want to provide them the opportunity to come to our institutions to be able to play the sport they love grow, mature, participate in community service activities. Um, our student athlete advisory boards on our campus along with the Mid-American Conference one are very active. Lots of listening that I think is very important. And then certainly one of my highlights is to watch them grow in their sport, participate there, but then I also take part in graduation ceremonies. So you're involved with them from the day to bring them in as a recruit watch all of that and then and certainly the opportunity to uh, watch them graduate. In addition to being one of the longest tenured uh, directors of athletics in the country at a single institution, you were one of the first female directors of athletics at the NCAA Division I football bowl subdivision level. You're still one of only I believe nine is the current number. Does that bring any kind of additional responsibility to you? You know, it's interesting because I can go back to the 23, 24 years, however we want to do, and I was one of seven. And I can tell you after those multiple 20 years that now we're looking at the number nine. So I would tell you we still have a long way to go. Uh, the opportunities of what I believe I bring to our institution, our student athletes, our program, our coaches, our staff is certainly the experiences that I had as a coach. So number one is the team building and making sure that when we hire people, I look at hiring coaching staff and staff members just as what I needed as a team. Uh, I do think also there's the opportunity that number one, I want to fight for student athlete rights and student athlete opportunities, uh, both male and female. But there's also a great pride that I take in the fact that our male student athletes get an opportunity to see that any women could be anything that they want to. It certainly wasn't anything that I could have dreamed of, dreamed of going up because there weren't uh, women doing the job that I'm doing. Uh, but the other part I would say is that we are seeing conference commissioners, we are seeing Division Two II and Three. Uh, certainly have many more women that are um, accepting jobs and getting opportunities, but it doesn't mean that uh, that has been an inclusive enough environment right now at all. 
speak to your dreams. You, you talked about that. As you were growing up in high school, into college, what were your aspirations? What, what, what path did you see yourself taking? Well, I always knew that I wanted to uh, work with people. I loved uh, being a gymnast. I knew that at the time growing up I was a coach along with that. So teaching and coaching was always very important to me. I did have an opportunity coming right out of college, which was kind of crazy. I thought I would be a teacher, uh, definitely in the physical education area, very involved in gymnastics too. But an opportunity came at Western Michigan due to a Title IX lawsuit where the institution was served where they fired a male volleyball coach, hired, uh, or I'm sorry, fired a female, hired a male, Title IX lawsuit came and the university had to settle by hiring full-time coaches for their women's sports. So yes, that was back in 1979 and there necessarily were not a lot of qualified coaches in women's gymnastics at that time. So that when I did apply for the job, my parents and everyone thought you were kind of crazy. Like, 23 years old, coming out of college, you think this is going to be your job, which um, I did. Uh, I think I've always gone forward and believed strongly, and if you set your goals, objectives, you live your, right, your, your life morally and ethically, and, and uh, do when work with others as you would want to be treated. I think those are all a big part of what I do, and I also, just want people to believe that you can, you know, set your mind to opportunities with coaching. Did I know I was going to have an opportunity to then move into the athletic administration role? I could have stayed coaching gymnastics, I think, for a long time, but um, did make the chance to, to move to, uh, you know, the athletic director's job, and I, I haven't looked back. You're been, you've been recognized by the Sports Business Journal as a game changer. What does that mean? Well, you know it means a lot. Um, I kind of smile because instead of my PhD, I've grown into my OLD, I think, um, as I look at the number of years I've served and what we've done. But um, it certainly was an honor because you do feel that you do want to make an impact and a positive impact. Sometimes, uh, you, especially being a female when there aren't as many, so that you hope you can also mentor and provide more opportunities for women. The exciting part about the event also was who else was being recognized. There were 35 women, and I was uh, athletic director from the NCA. There was one more NCA representative in that group, and all the rest of them were really young, bright, a diversified group of young women that are in the professional side of what we do. And uh, it was very exciting for me to literally be one of the older in the room and to see what talent there was and dreams and uh, never a thought that they couldn't be where they are and uh, believing strongly in what they did as we celebrated that day in New York City and it was a true celebration of, of me to be able to watch kind of some full circle uh, you know opportunity of, of starting in the business and then really seeing that the opportunities really are out there now and that any young woman who chooses to want to make this a profession they can do it as well as providing leadership on your campus, you provide leadership in the conference. You serve as the chair of the Council of Directors of Athletics. What does that entail? Well, it is, uh, it's also a real honor to do that. Um, it's proud, you know, I, I have to tell you because this number is kind of startling, but at, a year ago at our NCA uh, Division I athletic directors meeting, I counted up the number of individuals that I had worked with that were in the room out of like 133 of us potentially, and there were 72 that have some time in their life touched the Mid-American Conference that I had worked with. And uh, some may say some are here to go, and, and uh, I would say that that certainly has uh, you know, been a benefit of the league. Uh, however, obviously, being here as long as I've had, it's, you know, I don't always want to be the historian, but sometimes it's be fun to be able to think of why we put things where they have and then to really be excited about where I see our future going. Um, appreciate your leadership. Uh, no doubt about it, the conference office, we've never been in better shape of where we're going, how we're going, opportunities to play in bowl games, opportunities for postseason, opportunities for so much growth. And I think definitely serving as the chair, you kind of feel a responsibility to make sure you can assist that, help with that, and certainly be a part of the three groups of the uh, senior women administrators and also the faculty athletic reps who serve great roles um, in all of us, making sure that we continue 
in the Mid-American Conference to do it right. It's about the education, it's about the graduation, it's about the experience, it's about getting to championships, playing dreams, watching dreams come true, and certainly our presidents um, have been active roles in that, which I'm also proud of. There are some leagues that don't have presidential leadership, and I think um, the opportunity for you to also work with that and all of us to work within that is a critical part of what higher education and intercollegiate athletics needs today. Are there a couple moments that stand out during the course of your AD career that you click to from time to time and say, golly, what a great accomplishments by our program or our staff or our kids? Well, there are, and I can actually believe I remember some of them too, so that's a good thing. Uh, I think that, uh, boy, there's been so many on the academic side, which is a really big part. I know a year ago we won the All Sports Trophy and I've done that before the academic part of things. So when we know that we're academically having our 16 sports be able to you know, participate and excel that way. Uh, I would have to say that our Cotton Bowl experience two years ago was really special. And to watch uh, not only the Cotton Bowl, but at the Mid-American Conference Championship when we sold 40,000 tickets at Ford Field for Bronco Nation to show up and really be able to wear their brown and gold and be so proud of the university that they graduated from and then follow us on to the Cotton Bowl experience. It truly was a whole community experience and a Bronco Nation experience that I think has been a goal of mine since I've been there. My most important thing is I love Western Michigan, love what I'm doing. I've served six different presidents uh, during that tenure and uh, certainly know that we have a very special place in Kalamazoo and I want to keep that on the map, want to put that on the map, and there's no doubt that anytime we get national ex opportunities, national experience and exposure, which we've also been able to do in watching our television opportunities grow through the Mid-American Conference too, and appreciate the television partners as we've moved along the way. So it's hard, there's been some really great individual stories that you know I have from a coach and I have in watching some student athletes uh, come in and watch what they've sacrificed for and some of them uh, have have gained uh, golly and then they haven't come back I'll tell you young man I we had in Atlanta at the game just uh, two weeks ago I didn't have a great experience at the time and and had to leave for a disciplinary action and ended up coming back finishing his degree we helped him do that saw him at the Atlanta game uh, sent me a note after that that said thank you for holding me accountable which is what I think we really strive to do. We have 18 to 25 year olds that in our time and in our days are gonna make great choices and sometimes mistakes. But when you can also hear that, uh, you know, the impact that we've done and, and one other thing that I would say we're so proud of, we had a member of our staff who won the MAC Diversity Award, Dennis Corbin, that had been with us 35 years that we lost. But we celebrated this last week, it was Western Michigan Giving Day and um, it was an opportunity that our student athlete group chose that they wanted to get 100% participation in giving to uh, the Dennis Carbon Memorial Fund so that we could enhance our student athlete training experiences. Uh, and watching that and it being their choice are, are really great reasons why I continue to do what I do. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much.